In this final movie on the Radical Frequencies Dual Precision VCO, we're going to explore its sync function. That's this section right here. Now these VCOs use soft sync rather than hard sync. Hard sync is that classic Prophet 5 ripping lead sound you've heard from pop classics like the Cars Let's Go. Soft sync is a bit of a different beast. It resets in places you may not expect, so it gives you opportunities to either create brand new wave shapes or to create glitch sounds and noise. Right now, I have the oscillators not synced. The way that the master sync switch works on this dual oscillator is that if the switch is away from the word sync, then oscillator B, beta, is not syncing to A, alpha. When the switch is in the down position, then beta becomes a slave to alpha. Note that both oscillators also have their own sync in inputs, so you can sync the precision VCO to other oscillators. Right now I have sync turned off, and I just have two detuned VCOs. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this dual VCO, like several others, exhibits what's called entrainment. That if you get the two oscillators fairly close to each other, they'll lock in or sync all on their own. Let's go ahead and fine tune alpha here. You see, once I got close, they've locked in together. A little bit of drift there until they cross, and then they lock in. However, that only holds when they're really, really close to unison or octaves. What Sync says is whenever the master waveform is resetting, this is a sawtooth core oscillator, so that'd be when the sawtooth goes downward, then the slave oscillator, the synced oscillator, needs to reset as well. On hard sync, it's always on that falling edge. With soft sync, a harmonic of the fundamental may be strong enough to cause the slave waveform to reset. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this into drone mode. I'm actually gonna turn on the filter cutoff just to create a more mellow sound so this is less harsh to listen to, because I'm going to keep this running during this demo. I'm going to detune the oscillators, and then hit the sync switch. Now you see, rather than hard locking, it's having a hard time finding, well, where should I sync to it? So you got to get somewhat close for it to lock it and say, now we'll synchronize together. Then as I change the tuning on the slave oscillator, it's supposed to keep resetting to follow the master oscillator. I'll turn over to listen to just the slave oscillator, beta, and start retuning it. There's usually not a point in tuning the slave down lower than the master. In most cases, it will only cause the slave to reset prematurely. Let me show you. As I'm detuning beta, taking it down in pitch, you see it's trying to do a rising sawtooth wave, but before it's reached its final peak, it's encountering the downward slope on the master sawtooth and saying, oh, time for me to reset and start all over again. Now. I keep heading downward, these dual VCOs actually say, you know, I'm not a slave to always resetting on that edge. I may break the sync and look for another place to synchronize. Then you start getting all sorts of interesting modulated sounds as you get partial waveforms. However, sync is more interesting when the slave oscillator is tuned higher than the master oscillator, so let's do that. I'm rising up to where they fall almost in tune with each other. And then let's start tuning beta higher. It's lost its sync. It needs to get to the point where some harmonics align between the two. And it's close to a sound. Not quite synchronizing, but you can kind of see from the yellow sawtooth wave how its waveform is being truncated on that second iteration. So you see, there's one cycle of the yellow sawtooth. It's starting a second cycle hitting that edge of the master waveform and saying, oh, I better reset. Since we're in a kind of an odd harmonic, we have this almost inharmonic sound. And then through here, we're creating some different timbres because the wave shape's changing. There's another harmonic. The noise you see in the spectrograph shows that it's not an exact sync. There's some variation and warbling going on. And we can go ahead and play that tonally. tuning higher. Pure sound. You see I'm getting to almost to a doubling here. When I get past that doubling, we break the sync and start finding new timbres. There's a cool lock-in right there. We can mix in the master. That's the pitch of what's resetting the slave waveform. And here's that altered reset waveform, the other waveform. Again, I can play it. 
Now there's actually two different flavors of soft sync inside the dual precision VCO. And that's what these two switches are underneath the word sync. It's basically changing some different capacitors in the circuit. It's looking for different harmonics or different places to latch onto. Let's go ahead and flip this switch. We've lost our sync. Let's go find a different place. There it is, right there. Now that's a lovely high harmonic coming out there because the slave is almost triple the frequency of the master, but not quite. You see some difference in the heights of that yellow sawtooth peak before it's going to reset. Now let's come back down. And then once we get to a point where beta is below the pitch of alpha, we just reduce the amplitude until we finally break sync there. That's some of these interesting instabilities you can get with this oscillator if you're into more of a noise sort of feel. It's unstable, it's glitchy, it's noisy, different aesthetic. Turn down the filter enough, you get the interesting rumble. There's almost a subharmonic sort of feel. This is the master oscillator. See where its harmonics fall? It's one active higher. And here's the slave. It's latched onto a subharmonic of the master. Now, what if we were to use that old hard sync trick of using an envelope to vary the pitch of the slave oscillator? So that we ripped through these different latches. With hard sync, you'd get something that kept the same pitch, but just the timbre changed. Indeed, if you want to hear what that sounds like, here's a movie I made ages ago using a Roland dual oscillator, and here's an example of its hard sync sound. Well, soft sync has quite a different sound to it. Let's go ahead and grab a cable and take it from this envelope into the FM the frequency modulation input on our slave oscillator, because we want its pitch to change with the envelope. Plug it in there, turn up my exponential FM amount, re-trigger note. Now that was a very exaggerated long envelope. I'll speed up a little bit here and use less depth. There are all sorts of glitchiness as it goes through different areas of locking in or not locking in. I'll bring some of the master oscillator in for comparison. With the master oscillator keeping the fundamental, now we just get interesting noise and harmonic variation on top. Let's go ahead and bring that down. I'll blow the filter a little bit. becomes a kind of an interesting effect, actually. Not hard sync, but still usable. We'll change the sync switch. Only slight differences on these fast sweeps. If we were to sweep more slowly, we'd hear some differences. in at the end. And of course, since you have separate controls for things like linear FM, etc., you can start combining different effects. I'm going to turn down the pitch bend modulation from our envelope, make it faster, turn up the linear FM amount from the alpha oscillator, do a little bit of cross FM where beta is now FMing alpha. And of course, you don't need to use the sawtooth wave output. We can go ahead and switch over to the triangle. We'll go just to the slave oscillator, turn the filter, or the sine wave. 
and even without the enveloping, we can just create some different timbres. A lot of wispy high-end noise now. one. So the Radical Frequencies Dual Precision VCO is really quite a powerful, versatile double oscillator. Again, it's not a complex oscillator in that it does not have built-in wave folding, doesn't have built-in VCAs to just envelope it and it'll change the FM depth between the two halves, but it has some really intelligent normaling inside to go ahead and allow you to create very thick sounds even without patching, or if you want, start patching in external waveforms, sync sources, or enveloped sounds to go ahead and create more complex FM effects.